Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to those who are watching our service. On this Sunday morning, we've now turned to the colour red, which means we have now moved to the feast and festival of Pentecost, the coming of God's Holy Spirit. So on page one of our service book, Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Jesus Christ, whom we worship, is our crucified, risen and ascended Lord. And we have walked with him through his journey of love. We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on the cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. And we have enjoyed his risen presence with us, and his revelation of himself through the breaking of bread. We have seen his return to the throne before which every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And now, with the followers of his own time, we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people, through whom we make Christ known to the world. And so we say the prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we sit or kneel to pray. The disciples, on receiving the Holy Spirit, became empowered to be God's people. And up until that point, their vulnerability, their weakness, we read of in the gospel. So as we come on this day to give thanks for the empowering of God's Holy Spirit, we also recognise our vulnerability and our weakness and our need of God's Spirit in our own lives. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And so we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and <coughs> repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, <clears throat> and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> And because of God's forgiveness, we have the boldness to stand and say the glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, <coughs> heavenly King, 
Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. So we remain standing for our quiet. So let us pray that the Spirit will work through our lives to bring Christ to the world. God, who at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore re to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <clears throat> Amen. Would you please be seated? <coughs> I always get a frog in my throat in the way. <coughs> Little frogs. Okay. The reading um, for Pentecost is uh, Acts 2, 1 to 21. The coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were de devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and Prophesites, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No. This is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days I will be with you, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, 
and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please stand? Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Taken from the 15th chapter and into the 16th chapter. Jesus said, when the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Not, yet none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. But if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. But he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Would you please be seated? For on that amazing journey of faith. Last week the ascension and we're asked to wait for the coming of God's Holy Spirit. So I had a group of year four children in church yesterday and they're, they're looking at the subject of the Trinity and particularly um, yesterday we were reflecting on the Holy Spirit. And I always allow them a period of questioning. It's quite tough. You have to be theologically sharp. Always guarantee you're going to get the question um, yesterday. It was worded slightly different, but the question was, who gave birth to God? Crumbs, where'd you go with that one? <laughs> and then you have something quite beautiful. One of the children will have thought quite deeply about the things that they've been studying and a question will be asked of you and it's a really really important question so a girl said the holy spirit she said what does it feel like what does it feel like and i must admit it kind of um caught me short really because at different stages in my christian journey um the, the, that sense of god's power inside of me, that sense of God encouraging me or helping me or guiding me has, uh, you know, it, you, it, you can tangibly talk about it, but it's quite difficult to define it in that moment. And I was actually thinking, after she'd asked me that question, the beautiful question, that actually one of the things I've noticed kind of at the end of a long period of COVID and all the things that we've done is that I feel quite drained of God's spirit at the moment. And I think a lot of clergy, and I suspect a lot of laity have felt the same thing. It's been exhausting this past year, doing church in a very different way, you know, having to 
think differently and, you know, to try and keep engaged and all the things that we've done. And I, I was thinking after the children had gone, that I, in, in a lot of ways, and not, not, not in a bad way, but I kind of feel a bit lost in it. And when I read the story of how the disciples are transformed by God's Spirit, I was thinking, actually, we need a bit of that now. This comes at a really good time for all of us. Because I think we've concentrated so hard on getting through this pandemic that what we all need and why Pentecost has come at a really good time, we all need a bit of refreshing. We all need a new kind of encouragement and empowering in God. So her question for me, I felt like God was speaking to me through that child. What does it feel like? What does it feel like? And I was thinking, yeah, what does it feel like? So there's three, not five, <laughs> three, three beautiful images of the Holy Spirit in the Gospel. So there's, there's probably more, but these are the three that really stand out. Jesus' baptism. We're told that the Spirit descends like a dove. It's quite a beautiful image of the Holy Spirit. Gentle. Um, and, and a beauty. Doves are beautiful, aren't they? And you can, that, that kind of descending of the Spirit in the moment of Jesus' baptism talks about the intense gentleness of God's engagement at times with us. A bit like um, in the Old Testament where God passes by the cave in that gentle way. Um, there's a gentleness that the, the, the dove has, has a picture of. So when we talk about God's Holy Spirit, we must also understand that gentleness as part of it. At Pentecost and at the beginning of creation, there's this wonderful image of a powerful wind that blows. Now, if you've stood on top of the downs on a really windy day, the one thing that you know as you try and not fall over is you feel alive. If you've ever, I often like windy, wet days, you really feel alive. And even if you're not feeling alive, you're a bit down and droopy or whatever, the wind energizes you. You feel charged. Never go to a primary school or a secondary school on a windy day. The kids are uncontrollable. <laughs> the wind creates an energy that whether you want it or not, you feel it. Your brain feels alive. That's what the coming of the Spirit was like at Pentecost for the disciples. They had a really tough time watching Jesus die. They'd had a really tough time understanding his teaching. They'd really struggled after the resurrection. We hear in John's Gospel, they'd hidden themselves away for fear. And yet when the Holy Spirit comes in this energising wind, suddenly they're transformed into the most dedicated um, group of disciples to the Gospel. And then that, that image of a flame that comes down on to the disciples' heads. One of the children asked me yesterday, did it burn the tops of the heads? <laughs> <laughs> Only children. <laughs> but have you ever had your heart on fire? Have you ever felt so passionate that your heart burns within you? That, in a way, you feel the energy of that flame inside you. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It sets our hearts on fire with love for God and with love for each other. And I was thinking, as we journey on, and hopefully we're going to... We, 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 with the restrictions that have changed us, we, we've been... We've moved, haven't we? We can now eat indoors, we can hug, we can have family around, all those kinds of things. 
But I actually think we also need to refresh ourselves spiritually as well in this moment. This, this story of Pentecost comes up right at the right moment for us as God's people. So as we journey out of the most difficult time, we need our hearts on fire again for God. That great passion of faith. We need to ask God's Holy Spirit to set our hearts on fire with love for God and with love for each other. We need that wind to blow away all the cobwebs. The cobwebs of isolation, the cobwebs of box sets, the, the cobwebs of being caught indoors, the, 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 the cobwebs of not having physical contact, all those things. We need God's wind to blow through us, to enliven us, to enrich us, to empower us, to be God's people again as we journey out of COVID. But let's not forget the gentleness of the dark. That gentle touch of God in our lives, which we need to encourage us, to hold us, to heal us as we journey out of COVID. There's a wonderful commission as part of the service for Pentecost. And we use these words every time I remember them. <laughs> I'm going to ask you some questions. And I want you to respond with either I will or we will. But these questions are really good questions. Like that girl's question to me. They're really good questions as God's gathered people to define the journey that we make together. So remembering the image of the dove, remembering the power of that wind, and remembering the, 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 the hearts on fire for God's love. Could you answer these questions? So empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk into God's future, trusting him to be your guide? I will. Will you dare to embrace each other and grow together in love? I will. Will you dare to share your riches in common and minister to each other in need? I will. Will you dare to pray for each other until your hearts beat with the longings of God? I will. And will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's darkest places? I will. So on page five of our service book, let's stand to say the creed together. So let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we sit or kneel to pray. And to the bidding, Lord, come to bless us. Would you respond and fill us with your spirit? Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We pray for God to fill us with his spirit this day. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. 
We ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to make us wise to understand your will. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the peace of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to keep us confident of your love wherever you call us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there is division, sickness and sorrow. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to equip us for the work which you have given us. Lord, come to, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the fruit of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit, given us by the risen Lord. We ask you to keep the whole church living and departed in the joy of eternal life. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. Generous God, you sent your Holy Spirit upon your Messiah at the River Jordan and upon the disciples in the upper room. In your mercy, fill us with your Spirit. Hear our prayer, and make us one in heart and mind, to serve you with joy forever. Amen. Would you please stand? God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Eucharistic Prayer E on page 9, with an extended preface for the festival of Pentecost. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. This day we give you thanks, because in fulfilment of your promise, you pour out your Spirit upon us, filling us with your gifts, leading us into all truth, and uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith. Your Spirit gives us grace to call you Father, to proclaim your gospel to all nations and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all those in whom the Spirit dwells to proclaim the glory of your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread, and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary, Peter, James and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us,
So we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord. Trusting in our own righteousness, but let
faithful God who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal. Open our lips by your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, thank you for coming this morning. Thank you for those who have watched. Um, just to say, you'll notice on the news there's levels of uncertainty because of, you know, and I think that's always going to be the case as we journey on, you know, that there, there's always going to be a level of caution. We're, we're starting to be slightly ambitious, so um, if things happen in the way we would like them to, we're planning on an open air service at the end of June in uh, Lodsworth with him singing. I think that would be something we'd all enjoy doing in the rain, sat in the field behind the church there. And we're also gently now thinking about the possibilities of having our summer fair on our patronal weekend, which is going to be in August. We put some feelers out just to see what people would feel about that. We're not nothing too ambitious, just to gather and you know um, celebrate. So. Just to put out there for everybody that we are slowly, but it all depends on all the stages that we go through now on the journey that we make. But I think it's really good, and it's part of that spirit thing, that we can start to, to lift our eyes again to being God's people in the ways that we might have been in the past. And I think that those two events, a, a, a patronal weekend with a fair and an open air service would be moments of celebration and moments also that we can start to recognize the normality of where we might be returned so can i ask you to pray for those things pray for um that that desire in us to return and one day to sing in here hymns again can you imagine how good that day is going to be but also the other thing is to if you're feeling like me you need that to be re-energized by the Holy Spirit. Let's pray for that for each other. Let's, let's be ambitious in our prayers for each other that we will feel on, on fire for God in our love for God and for each other. And these words of blessing, may they encourage you in that prayer. So let's stand for our final blessing. And may the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you the life he gives. Amen. And may the Spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when, she, when the Eternal Son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. And may the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost. Bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord.